Yon! Ayan na, ayan na mga ka-fuego, mga ka-meta, mga ka-zaddy, kaong sakay dyan. I hope nakapagpahinga kayo after mga meta 5 natin kapon or kanina umaga. Naku po, umabot tayo ng 2am. Ibang klase talaga meron tayo. Mga loyal followers, kung mga may loyalista din tayo. Mga heydarianistas, ayan no? Ano yung sandanista? Parang ganun. Ayan tayo. Eh. Ayan, nakapagpahinga nga kayo. Uh, today, ah, medyo mag-follow up tayo. Alam ko, parang may, may press con ba kanina si bagong president natin? Oh, mamaya ko na patulan yan. For the meantime, baligan ko yung issue na gusto kong pag-usapan. Uh, again, ah, related ito sa issue ng ating kasaysayan. So, pag-usapan natin si tatay. Uy, kanina nakita ko yung isang, yung parang Kim Jong-un na vlogger. Diba? Yung ano... Meron pa siyang pa-blank, blank, uh, ano, column, column pa. Wala na, gas, gas na yan. At ako, ginawa ko lang yun nung time na yan, dun sa isang column ko, yung blank column ko. Ito yung, ang konteksto na yan, guys, ang konteksto na yun is yung response ni tatay dun sa read bank. Napaka mali naman na parang dinidefend pa niya yung China or dinidownplay niya yung situation. Kaya nga nagsulat ako ng ganun. I'm not someone, hindi ako mahilig sa stunts because my own arguments and style they're enough. Hindi ako yung pa-cloud chasing na stunt stunt. Kaya nga nasulat ko yung blank column ko dun sa inquiry. And, uh, excuse me, that was not for attention grabbing or anything like that. There was a very specific context within which, no? Nag, uh, lumabas ako with that blank column. And I was super trolled after that. And then ito yung mga henyo ng mga kabila na zero naman na academic publication sa buhay. Paano pa sila? Pa-argue pa sila ng plagiarism, mga ganang-ganan. Kasi, uh, I'm, I think I'm occupying Conrad De Quiro's space dun sa column niya. So, some people were saying, but ginawa ni Conrad din yan? But it's a completely different context na ginawa ko. And by the way, foreign policy, China, this is my forte. So, kaya nagsulat tayo ng blank column no. Nala niya, ito, ito. Yan, sa Yahoo News, yung nag-blank column ako. So, ang title was, Duterte's Independent Foreign Policy. And of course, it was a kind of a commentary on the fact that President Duterte cannot claim to be independent when he's so ganyan-ganyan sa China. Hindi mali naman yan, alright? So, yun yung context. So, kanina, may columnista yung vlogger na yan. Anong tabloid ba yan? Anong what self-respecting daily will have writers like that, alright? Okay, anyway, hindi ko napapatulang kayo at natawa na lang kami kanina. Ay, nagsusulat pala siya. Ay, hindi pala. Hindi siya nagsusulat. Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo eh. Okay. Speaking of Duterte and Duterte's legacy, kaya nga pag-usapan ko today. Kasi ganito guys, eh, isang problema natin dito sa Pilipinas is, well, marami tayong problema. Pero isang, Pilipi, isang problema natin is, you know, we are having these history wars. Kaya nga kapon, or hanggang kanina umaga, kausap po natin si... Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Lisandro Claudio is a historian based in UC Berkeley and my former colleague in Ateneo. The reason na ginawa natin yung sapin uh, kasaysayan is because meron tayong problema sa collective amnesia, authoritarian nostalgia, revisionism, denialism especially, etc. Tapos sinasabi pa, chismis pang kasaysayan. But you know, the other thing I also noticed with us is that we also have different and very selective and questionable reference points. So for instance, uh, Let's say the opposition and liberals, progressive in this country, want to focus a lot, especially liberals. Progressive, medyo iba pa sila. Liberals, medyo center, center mo yan. They want to focus more on yung mga nangyara sa panon ni Marcos. All right? The dark days of the dictatorship, the human rights violation and democracy. At the same time, people like Tatay Digong want to talk about U.S. crimes against the Philippines, let's say, 100 years ago. Nung Philippine-American uh, War, no? Nung time na yan, yung, re- yung revolution natin laban sa mga Amerikano, kaya nga papasok si General Luna dyan, no So, yun yung context. So, my point is, uh, and then, not to mention, others naman, they want to focus on, so the late Carlos Celdran, my good friend, always talked about yung damage na ginawa ng mga Amerikano sa Man- Manila. Binomba nila yan eh. They dropped, what, 40,000 artillery shells on Manila? Kaya nga sirang-sira yung Manila, yung top three most devastated cities. Pro, uh, around 100,000 civilians died. Sino may kasalanan yan? Eh, nag America, Japan, at yung America, bomba lang sila na bomba para hindi na ma-risk yung kanilang mga sundal. Eh, kawawa yung Pilipinas. So why shouldn't we focus also on that part of our history? Why should we focus on 40 years ago, 50 years ago? Why shouldn't we focus on 70 years ago or 100 years ago, right? In the great scheme of things, there's not much difference between 40 years ago or 100 years ago. So meron tayong mga problemang ganito. So you cannot be selective 
No, you have to look at the crimes in the past of not only those you don't you don't like, but also those who you like, including yung mga oligarchs natin, including yung mga dating colonial masters natin. So, wag tayo maging selective na ganun. So, you cannot dismiss and say, Paolo Duterte has no right to talk about what Americans did in Balangiga situation. And then, but say, but we should only focus on what happened 40 years ago. Hindi pwedeng ganyan. I think at least what happened in our modern history, at least what happened in the last 100 years, we have to criticize and hold people to account. Some people would even say na baka reparations pa ang kailangan natin from our former colonial masters, katulad ng hiningin ng Haiti and some of the other former colonies. So, yan ang problema ko. You have no right to talk about uh, historical amnesia and historical ignorance if you yourself are not researching about what other major historical crimes were committed against the Philippines by our former colonial masters. No? And I'm not being anti-this or anti-that. I'm just saying the facts, right? So, kung ayaw niyo maniwala sa akin, basahin niyo yung book na Rampage. All right? It's written by this Pulitzer Prize historian. All right? Uh, Doon niyo nakikita yung damage na ginawa ng Amerika sa atin. Kaya nga yung Manila never na nag-recover. Ito, oh. Oh, may Yamashita pa dyan. <laughs> yung mga mahilig dyan. Ito, 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 ito. I-post ko yan mamaya. Ito, ah. Uh. Ito yung book. Rampage, MacArthur, Yamashita, and the Battle of Manila. Alright? Ito, uh. Amerikano ang nagsulat niya na hindi Chinese. James M. Scott ang nagsulat nito. Pakibasa yan para magkakaroon kayo ng tamang konteksto. Hindi lang kayo focus kay Marcos. Tignan nyo rin naman yung ginawa ng mga iba, diba? Ayan. Up to 100,000 Filipinos were killed based on some estimates here. Much of our historical legacy, I mean, Manila was Perla del Oriente, right? It was the Paris of the East. After that, third most devastated city on earth, along Berlin, Warsaw, you can also put Tokyo there probably. I mean, grabe, diba? So why should we forget also that? That was 30 years before Marcos. Why should we focus on Marcos but forget that? So my point is, nga, if you're a true progressive, you will criticize all of the crimes against the Philippines by whoever it were it was committed all right so yun lang guys yun lang guys yun talagang uh, dapat titignan natin okay now going back i say sabi mo Mitch, low energy ang gusto mag boxing tayo nag ano pa nga ako eh, nag konting pa ano pa tayo para yung biceps natin medyo lumabas konting ano tayo bago tayo ng ano para medyo lumabas yung biceps natin kasi masakit sa bangs at biceps minsan yung mga comments ni <laughs> ayan tayo eh. Alright, I'm trying to just bring out. Don't worry, I'll, I'll post you the book. Uh, basahin nyo yan, ha? Yan. Kasi yan ang problema sa atin. Eh. Puro selective lang yung memories natin. Hindi lang uh, uh, amnesia. Memory pa. Selective pa. Diba? Oh, ito, ito, ito yung book, uh, Rampage. Yan. Basahin nyo yan. Alright? Or at least read its reviews para makikita nyo yung gist of the argument or reviews of the author, no? si James Scott. Alright, para you know naman what's happening. In fact, for me, it's shocking that we had to wait for an American to do this study. Bakit tayo mismo wala tayong ganun? Kasi ito, nakausap niya yung mga witnesses, eh, yung mga buhay pa na witnesses. So, meron siyang first-person account no, of the devastation of that era. Kasi ito si MacArthur, palpak siya. Yung preparation niya mali. He gave four days to the Japanese to prepare and fortify the city. By the time na dumating siya, fortified yung city, ito mga Amerikana, i-sacrifice yung sarili nilang sandalo, binomba-bomba lang nila yung buong area, even if may mga civilians, may mga bata, may kababaihan, may mga tatanda. Right? Isn't that something wrong? It is very wrong. Why aren't we pointing that out? That's my point. Eh. Yan ang problema. Galit ka sa China, galit ka kay Marcos, and then you're completely forgetting what the other the West did to us. But, of course, I'm talking about history. Today, of course, U.S. is a different question. Today, U.S. is, of course, uh, one of our few insurance policies as far as dealing with China is concerned. Kung walang U.S., good luck na lang dealing with, with China on your own. Kaya nga, Japan and Korea are still keeping the American troops, right? Kaya nga, South Korea and Japan are even strengthening further their alliances with America. Not because gusto nila maging tuta ng America, but because they know they're facing real threats in the region. So that's real politics. Alright? Hindi yung slogan, etc. Now, the other thing I want to also say here before I go to President Duterte uh, uh, and his legacy, uh, yun nga eh, kasi yun ang point ko eh. President Duterte is a very recent legacy. It's a very recent history, right? And what happened under President Duterte will have ramifications for, for our country for years and decades to come, including the Marcos presidency. Marcos Jr. would not have become the president of the Philippines, in my opinion, had he not teamed up with the Dutertes, right? And you can connect the dots and 
see where the, where the argument is coming from, right? If Sara Duterte ran for the presidency, we would have had a very competitive field, quite a different picture, not 60% for one person and then the rest, uh, ano na lang, they will pick up the, ano man na, yung mga tira-tira dyan sa 40%, yan. Okay, so, let me also say another thing, kasi, parang pansin ko, marami dyan sa mga supporters ng opposition, ay may, either tahimik lang ngayon, despondent, uh, yung iba, nagma-migrate niya, benta na lahat, uwi, abroad na sila. Okay, para ako naman. Imagine if yung ibang bansa, ganun din sila. Every time may election na hindi nila gusto or may nangyari nila gusto, ay, mag-great na tayo. And then, then, who would have built Italy after Second World War? Who would have built Japan or Germany after Second World War? Who would have rebuilt Russia after uh, losing 26 million people during Second World War? Can you imagine if, if all the middle-class educated people in every country, they just migrated every time they didn't like a political result? Now, ibang usapan yung revolution, right? I mean, like, violent revolution, kung saan pwedeng patayin mo ang pamilya mo. Yes, you have all the right to be an exile. I can completely understand that. But that's not the situation here. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Okay, so going back to this... Isa pang napansin ko dito sa Pilipinas, isang problema natin, aside from, ay, mag-migrate na lang ako, yung ganyan mindset. Okay, good for you, na may pera ka at may ganyan, pwede ka mag-migrate. Kawawa naman yung mga kaubayan natin na 99.9% hindi makapag-migrate, di ba? Okay, going back to that, let's talk about this. Yung isa pang problema na napansin ko dito sa Pilipinas is, nag-mobilize lang yung mga tao, especially mga progressives, those who want good change, not just any change. Election time. So, election time, ito, excited lahat. Minsan, yung last month pa, 11th hour na nag- nagsisilabasan. And then, tapos na election, depressed na or natuwa na. And then, back to reality. Which is political in- indifference, right? Or apathy, right? Kaya nga sabi nung isang Pulitzer, ay, isang Nobel Prize winner uh, na the opposite of love is apathy, not hate. Because apathy is walang pake. Tapos na eh. Tapos na elections, bumoto na ako or hindi nga ako bumoto, nag- Nag-nega lang ako, or nag-kuda lang ako, nag lang ako, and then wala na. Hanash lang. Um, yan ang problema. Uh, ang <laughs> you won't have real change, sustained real change, right? Unless you, do, unless you have sustained struggle. How do you think Germany became Germany of today? How do you think Norway and Sweden became Norway and Sweden today? It didn't come out of nowhere. It, it's not like they elected some angel and then the angel made their country again. No, it was... Pro, it was a product of decades and centuries of struggle by progressive forces, including labor union groups, including civil society groups, including feminists, environmentalists. All of these people came together, and that is why Germany today is one of the most progressive countries. I'm not talking about economically alone. I'm also talking about politically, in terms of national consciousness. Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, and mga, mga, to, mga Vikings to dati. Pero umayos sila because there was... Both liberalizers at the very top in the royalty, especially in Sweden, uh, Gustav onwards. And then uh, at the same time, dun sa baba, you had labor unions, you had ordinary people, farmers, religious groups, civil society groups, pushing for egalitarian rights and more equality and modern rights for centuries. Especially in the past 70 years in Sweden, you had constant efforts kaya nagkakaroon sila ng mga social democratic party di ba mga SPD in Germany their counterpart in Sweden nagtrabaho po sila ng year after year after year hindi lang yung boboto ka lang sa elections ay naghirap ako nagregister ako bumoto ako I did na my duty to the country and magmamigrate na ako or ayan na mag pa, wala na akong pake sa politics drama drama hanash hanash karen karen kuda kuda tapos Sira-sirain yung mga voters, lalaitin yung bansa natin. I mean, come on. That's pathetic. I'm sorry to say that. But that's not how you change a country. A country changes when you have sustained struggle, struggle and commitment for change. And you're organized, you're mobilized. May tama kayong leadership, charismatic leadership. Meron kayong tamang diskarte. You can make the tough choices here. You make compromises here. You push the envelope there. You strengthen your bargaining strategy. You need a social movement. You need a real political party. You need decisive leadership. And you need people to not get out there only in the last two months or last month of a campaign or last weeks of a campaign to be there before, during, and after casting of their ballot box. So, yan ang point ko. People have very simplistic, if not erroneous, understanding of how political change happens. Political change doesn't happen when you just, by chance, get some better guy or a lady elected into office and then bahala na. Kaya nga sabi ko, even if Lenny were to win, she, should, she would have had to deal with the Congress, a Senate, 
LGUs, a lot of them dominated by illiberal forces, warlords, dynasties. Good luck getting good governance and transparency measures through or structural reforms through, without sustained social movement and support. Kaya nga, yun ang, yun ang problema ko eh. Yun ang problema At talagang hindi aasin sa itong bansa natin unless we have a proper understanding of what active citizenship is all about and how sustained political change comes about. Do you have any idea about the suffrage movement? It took decades and a lot of revolts uh, and civil rights movements for people in different countries to even have the right to vote and for poor men, for not property men. Like, and then later on, the women suffrage movement had to come in. In the U.S., hanggang ngayon, Black Lives Matter, they're fighting for, they're struggling for, they're conducting national uh, rallies and, 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 and protests so that to, to make sure that the African Americans are not second-class citizens in America, right? That, in, that America is much more honest and true to its foundational principles and values and the things that the forefathers were pushing for, including the inalienable right of every man and woman, right? To dignity, property, freedom, and pursuit of happiness, diba? So, so yun ang hindi ko maintindihan. Where on earth did people get this idea that, that real change will just come, good real change will just come with electing some right person there into office and then kung andon siya, tapos ng laban. Kung Na, wala siya, tapos na rin yung laban. I mean, it doesn't work that way, right? It just doesn't work that way, right? Now, going back to this, I'm sorry. I, again, uh, let me just be very clear. Oh, mamaya, ma, ano naman, mas plies na naman tayo dito. Uh. Let me just be very clear. Everyone is entitled to make choices in their life. You want to move abroad, that's your choice. I'm not going to judge you for that. But to say that, ah, hindi na napunta sa gusto ko yung result ng election, at least na ako, and you feel justified and morally uh, whatever with that, ah, uh, I have, I have my, like, uh, do you even know what you're talking about? What, would you, are you expecting that in two, three months of activism, you're gonna overturn 30 years of counter-revolution? That's not how things happen. Where do you, people get your ideas, right? And I cannot blame you because no one is, because I, marami sa ating kababayan have not been properly educated in political history, right? And I'm talking about comparative political history, right? Marami tayong mga trashy bloggers, marami tayong mga simplistic academics, kuno, diba? Marami tayong mga journalists who talk about, remember, even mentiel, recency bias, recent events, ephemeral events, but don't have the kind of long jury long-term structural analysis and that's what we're trying to do in our works in our in our metas in my lectures in my uh public events etc and and interviews diba? so yun ang ginagawa natin ngayon. now speaking of history before we even debate about what happened 40 years ago 60 years ago 100 years ago which i think are all important you cannot just say ito lang importante dun lang tayo sa marcos kalimutan na natin ginawa na america or ginawa na espanya or ginawa na mga oligarchs hindi pwede yan Right? You have to know it. You have to study them all and then put them into perspective. Right? Okay, so going back to this, just going back to this, uh, and respond now. Okay. Kailangan ko lang sumagot dito sa mga anak. Okay. Pagod ako dito sa light. Okay. Na, na, tiring itong light na ito. Ano mo lang tayo. Okay. Now, let's go back to the issue of a recent past. And si Tatay Digong, wala na. Wala na siya sa Malacanang. Uwi siya kaagad sa Davao. Di na siya nag... nag or Davao ba? Or Green Hill? Saan siya pumunta after? Umalis na siya ng Malacanang for the last time. Um... Basta hindi na siya pumunta doon sa inauguration ni Marcos Jr. which speaks volumes, no? Uh, the fact na FBR, era na sobrang tanda na sila and all of them fragile, they, they still went there but hindi si tatay, well, connect the dots, diba? <laughs> so, going back to this, so ito yung article ko today na hindi niyo naman pinansin, walang iya. <laughs> Yan ang problema eh, parang okay, tapos na si Duterte, wag na natin pag-usapan. Uh, uh, actually, his legacy is shaping our present and decades to come, alright? So, hindi natin pwede kalimutan lang ginawa ni tatay, alright? And I'm, again, I, I gave a long meta on 
the pros and cons, the good and bad and ugly and all of that, no? But one thing I want to talk about today is, I think column ko today, yung, uh, Duterte legacy, a bonfire of institutions. So I want to focus on the issue of institutions because this is another thing that people forget. Remember I said you need sustained struggle to bring about radical transformation of a society for the better, right? And one way to do that is through establishing institutions or repairing institutions and upgrading institutions. And what are institutions? Institutions are regularized practices embodied by organizations, by groups, uh, and organs of the state, right, that are designed to solve specific problems, right? So, uh, for instance, the national, uh, so the state is an institution. It's an institution that human beings designed in order to deal with the issues of governance and order creation, right? And you cannot build that overnight. You cannot build that in one year, in six years, whatever, right? What you can do is you can improve it, lay down the foundations, damage control, heal it, right? So, institutions are central to national transformation. No, kailangan talaga natin itong mga institution na to, no? Media are institutions. Specific media organizations alone are institutions. ABS-CBN is an institution, right? Uh, Rappler, it's an institution in, in its own right in terms of cutting edge, uh, mobile, internet-based journalism, right? They, they are institutions, right? So when you talk about institutions, right, it takes years and decades to build them. It takes a number, not one, but a number of bigger-than-life figures with ambition, with, with vigor, with commitment and conviction to build this institution. Hindi po madali gumawa ng mga institution, right? And this is where I, I have some serious problems with what has been happening in the Philippines in the past few years. My fear is that what we have had is a bonfire of institutions. And I got that term via Dr. Nicole Corato, uh, you know, um, from my fellow uh, inquiry columnist, uh, Randy David. And by the way, Philippine Daily Inquirer is also an institution itself. It was at the forefront of the ETSA movement uh, and the coverage of the shenanigans of the dictatorship. And through the years, it has covered and exposed the shenanigans of different politicians and political figures. So... And it, so it takes years and decades of dedication by many people on multiple levels to create institutions, right? So this is what we have in mind. Now, as I said, in fairness to President Duterte, I already discussed this in, 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 in a previous meta, he did some commendable things with which are also very consequential. I think the Bangsamoro, uh, uh, um, you know, autonomous region, uh, the BARM referendum and supporting... Uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters to build a much larger and more, more efficient and self-sustaining um, autonomous body. That was an act of political courage by President Duterte. And President Duterte has constantly emphasized the need for a kind of a multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-religious Philippines. So in that sense, it's actually progressive, at least on that front, right? I also, uh, I also support Jung, uh, Jung Pushnia for... Uh, I also support Jung Pushnia for... Um, Infrastructure development. So our infrastructure spending as a share of GDP in, uh, doubled under President Duterte. Lumampas ito sa 5% of the GDP. So ito yung pinakamataas in recent decades. Of course, partly thanks to the Aquino and Arroyo administration for doing the saving and economic growth. But in fairness, ginamit naman ito sa marami infrastructure projects. Not so successful on big ticket infrastructure projects, pero medyo successful dun sa mga provincial projects. No? Bridges, roads, etc. Uh, sa mga probinsya. So there's much more widening and distribution of infrastructure development growth. Lalo lalo na sa probinsya at sa Mindanao. So in fairness naman dyan. But I have had three problems with President Duterte's legacy, especially for our institutions. And this is where my worries come in. No, Now, Ito kasi yung concern ko with President Duterte. I think, you see, I mean, he, we have had nothing like him. Eh? And I don't think we'll ever have any president like him. That doesn't mean he's great. I'm just saying he really opened that Philippine politics unlike any president I can imagine, right? He won barely under 40% of the votes, but his approval rating shot up to 90%. He, has, he had this kind of populist charisma, almost like a dark magic, right? That maintained high levels of popularity. Now, the problem though I had is hindi niya nagamit itong laking political capital popularity into what I call state building. Doon ako medyo nakapos sa kanya, right? And I'm not gonna repeat everything I've said already in human rights disaster, the drug war disaster, the, the illiberal crackdown on, on opposition and media disaster. 
napag-usapan na natin yan. So, medyo micro, macro level tayo. We'll look at more at the level of institutions. So, I think there are three major problems with the Duterte legacy as far as institution building, state building in the Philippines is concerned. The first one is that Duterte's ascent to power reinforced this myth of what Julia Lavelle, the historian, calls political volunteerism. This idea that Anong problema natin sa bansa? Maraming droga, maraming krimen. Anong problema natin sa bansa? Maraming corruption, ganito. Anong problema natin sa bansa? Maraming insurgency. Anong solusyon? Lagay nyo si tatay, si tatay mismo, dahil sa kanyang political will, single-handedly will solve all the problems. Ito yung mga Robin Padilla style, di ba? Parang i-action star lang natin yan, biglang maayos ang lahat. Now, of course, political will matters to a certain degree, but political will alone, without proper thinking, proper planning, you know what I'm saying, without science, evidence, para-bara style. Wala yan. And at the same time, we are in the 21st century. Wala tayong sa medieval era or even 20th or 90th century where single men or women could have made much bigger difference because societies were less complicated. Power relations were less asymmetrical. Mobility of people and mentality of people was very, very different. Now, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, where I'm coming from, you have to read this book, The End of Power by Moises Naim. Where did I put that book? Ito, 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 ito. Read this book by Moises Naim. It's a very, very good book. Uh, he was a former Venezuelan foreign minister, uh, finance minister and also he was the former editor of Foreign Policy Magazine, right? Okay. Really good book because he, uh, he, he explains to us how the very physics of power has changed in the 21st century. There are more people, so change in numbers brings change in quality, game theory. Uh, there's more mobility. People can just migrate kung ayaw nila ng resulta ng isang. Or investors can just take out their money easily, uh, unlike before, back in the days. And there's also a change in mentality of people. People want more cycles of change and innovation and all. Madali mabored ng tao ngayon, hindi katulad ng dati, right? So the physics of power has changed. That's why yung tatay-style politics just doesn't work in the 21st century, right? So, this is my problem. Suddenly, now everyone talks about political will, political will, political will. And then you ask them, what is really political will? Puro mga blah, blah, blah lang marinig mo. And if you ask them, okay, how will political will help us to deal with a million problems in a sustained fashion? So, my problem here is that wala akong issue sa political will. My issue is that if political will will make us forget that you need institutions, strong institutions, you need proper planning, hindi bara-bara, I got a serious problem with that kind of discourse. So I call it the myth of political voluntarism. No, for instance, look at the third is war on drugs. Abala na si Tata. Ay yan pala bara bara. Hindi natin alam kung saan galing mga datas niya. Sino nandon? Sino nandyan? Anong solution? Ay yan bara bara. Ang dami ng yare male. Walang mga kung problema sa war on drugs. Okay lang sa akin yan. But you need to do it properly. There has to be due diligence. Pero kung puro mga bala na si ganyan, bala na si Robin. Ay wala talag talagang mga yare sa atin yan, de ba? And the second one, so this related. The second problem I also had over the past six years or so, is, although this is not unique to the previous administration, to be fair, is what you can call as political performativity. You want to think about, what, uh, okay, what's the best example of that? Dolomite Beach. On the surface, ay, ang anda, ay, ang anda. May white beach tayo, white sand beach tayo dyan. But once you scratch the surface, you'll understand while no serious environmental expert or policy experts or accountant or whatever looks at it and says, that's a great project, no. Because in dun sa ginastos nila dyan, uh, you did not create a sustained solution to the problem. You could have spent one-tenth of that on, I don't know, mangrove trees and baka mas maging environmentally successful pa yung response mo dyan. And sana naman hindi lang isang parta lang na Manila Bay, dapat inaayos yung buong Manila Bay. So you spend a lot of money in a small part on a very cosmetic kind of uh, project without having any sustained solution on Moss for the entire Manila Bay, Right? So that's performative politics. It's really all, all about optics. Feel good, no? Gandang tignan. Picture, picture. Flash, flash, flash. So the great populist scholar of populism uh, from Aren uh, Chile, I think. Was it from Chile or Argentina? Ernesto Laclau. He called it the empty signifier. May parang medyo may pagka parang feel good bola or something like that, no? No, no hindi naman to Totally, but the Dolomite Beach project very much captures what Ernesto Laclau was saying. This empty signifier, these big pronouncements and projects that are emotionally resonant 
but rationally speaking, policy-wise speaking, they don't make much sense, right? So they're headline-grabbing pronouncements. They're about impression management, perception management, but they're really more about performativity than actual performance. So yun, and, and, and sa tingin ko, hindi makawala yan. Lalong lalala yan yung itong performative in, kaysa performance-based governance in the coming years thanks to TikTok, politic, thanks to all of this Alam niya, mga Talano style, mga ano, yan. Alam niya na des, di ba? Mga email difficult projects, yun. Alam niya yan. And lastly, the problem also I had was this uh, arbitrariness and absenteeism. Nasaan si tatay? Andiyan ko pa siya. Nasa Davao ba siya? Nasa Malacanang ba siya? Mag-Facebook live pa para alam ko andun pa siya. Di ba? Like, and then, napaka-arbitrary. Biglang ganito yung decision on this issue. Like, there, there are issues where ba yung VFA with America. Urong sulong, urong sulong, urong sulong. Like, you know, uncertainty, if it's intentional, makes sense. Pero may times na parang sabog to eh. Hindi ito intentional. Parang talagang kalat lang talaga yung nangyayari. No? So, well, you, you get what I'm saying, guys. So, and then, look at it. No una, kalmada tayo. Sabi nga ni ano, di ba, yung gusto mag-DOH secretary. We got this under control. Yung hilig mag-tweet. Hindi ko alam kung tinitingnan niya yung mga data talaga. Tapos, wag na natin yung travel restriction ng mga China. Okay pa naman tayo. Huwag tayo panic. And then biglang, by March, boom! Uh, gusto na mag-lockdown. Tapos, sobrang haba ng lockdown. Bug-bug yung economy. Kaya 10% almost yung contraction in 2020. It didn't have to be that bad. Because our neighbors either had economic growth, like Vietnam or Taiwan, or didn't have such a deep contraction. Indonesia's contraction was 3%. Compared to us, 9.1%. 4, 5, 6%. Like, so, yan, bara-bara. Arbitrary. Right? Arbitrary. And then you don't know who's in charge. Is it this guy? Is it that guy? Where's Tatay? Etc. So, that's my problem here. That what we had what here was, you know, because as I say in my article, a major problem under the previous president was the rare combination of uh, uh, arbitrariness and absenteeism. Now, again, to, to build a strong state, which is essential to long-term rational development, a leader must invest in the rule of law, value long-term planning, and above all, rely on evidence-based policy-making. What on earth in the past six years was meeting those key elements? Long-term planning. Okay, maybe acti- it's a DND and yan. I'm not sure about the drug war or Dolomite Beach, for instance. Ano mga long-term planning sustainability dyan? Baka dalawang bagyo pa lang. Ano na? All right. Ilang big fish ang nahuli, right? Rule of law. Rule of law is different from weaponization of the law. Rule of law means... The law will apply to everyone predictably, even if resident or hindi. So, kung may corruption talaga nangyari, may farmali, may kalokohan, may EJK, etc., there has to be accountability. Now, tell me how on earth do we have rule of law? How can you say we have more order when tumaas pa numbers of unexplained deaths, right? By thousands over the past six years. Yeah, bumaba yung small-time theft, yung, I don't know, snatcher, ganon, para tumaas naman yung homicide rates. How on earth is that law and order, Right? So, yan ang problema ko dyan. So, that's why I said, consummate populists often rely on optics and myths to rule and maintain high popularity. And the reality is actually it works politically. It works. Dolomite Beach politics works. It just works. Tatay style works eh. And for me, that sets a, day, that set a, that sets a precedence for how, how our governance is going to be handled for years and decades to come. Wala. Tapos, talagang iba na ngayon eh. Uh, and... But let me say, I think President Duterte raised many good questions. He raised questions about our foreign policy, how dependent we should be on traditional allies. He raised very good questions about law and order, that we have to deal with uh, uh, safety of our communities. He raised some very good questions about oligarchs, predatory oligarchs controlling key sectors of the economy. He raised good questions about corruption in mainstream media, etc. Yes, but I am very, very not sure about the answers he provided. And that's the problem in general with populists. They raise good questions, but they're not very good in answering those very questions. And when they provide answers, they tend to make the situation worse. All right? Okay. Now, kaya nga dito, guys, kaya nga dito, guys, sinasabi ko, we, we need to develop a culture that hindi lang siya momentary excitement, hindi lang siya 11th hour mobilization, hindi lang siya umaasa lang sa isang tao or isang grupo, para magliktas ng ating bayan. Like, ngayon, lahat sabi, oh, hintayin natin si Vico Sota naman, ang, 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 hintayin naman natin si, ano naman, si Sara Duterte naman, ang, 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 ang. like, 
Why should we think along those lines? Why shouldn't we think along the lines of we should build strong institutions in the meantime? Kahit sinong presidente natin, we have to encourage him or her to build strong institutions. Ayusin yung debt-ed. Bayaran na mabuti yung mga... Uh, hindi bayaran na. Yung, I mean, compensate properly uh, yung ating mga guro and give them proper training. Right? So, God willing, I'll be teaching graduate uh, students again soon. Uh, and some of my students could come from DepEd, for instance, and I look forward to having discussion engagement for them. No, um, so we really na- need to train yung mga ating guru. We need to po- provide them maximum support systems. We need to make sure we have the digital infrastructure for them. That's institution building. That's institution building. Now, my ma pronouncement si uh, Vice President Sara Duterte that I actually support. So, Vice President Sara Duterte, for instance, pushed for creating regional offices for the VP office, for creating, for instance, a permanent, permanent tahanan para sa ating VP. I agree with that. Kasi otherwise, nagiging spare tire lang yung VP. Wala, hindi nga natin alam saan papunta yung VP. Kaya nga madaling i-echepura yung VP. Now, you may say, well, Sarah has her own blah, blah, blah. Sure, okay, you can say that. But my point is, we need to institutionalize the office of the vice president para hindi lang siya mukhang spare tire at umaasa lang dun sa anong kabineta ibibigay or hindi ibibigay ng presidente sa kanya. After all, the vice president is the second highest position in the land. Mahalaga yung opisina na yan eh. Kailangan natin i-institutionalize niyan. The same thing sa ating sandataan lahas, lakas. Kailangan natin mag-invest dun sa ating uh, 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 Navy, sa ating Air Force. We have to build their capacity. We give them training, cyber warfare. So, all of these are institution building, guys. At yun ang kulang talaga sa ating diskusyon. Eh. People talk about personalities. They forget institutions. Personalities are ephemeral and mortal. Institutions are almost eternal, right? Uh, institution can last for centuries, if not millennia. Right? The Catholic Church is an institution. It has lasted for more than a millennia, right? 2,000 years, right? Uh, last ito, uh, uh, so, not 2,000 years, but I mean like more than 1,000 years, right? So, there were empires that lasted centuries, if not a millennia, right? Uh, the Byzantium, for instance, the Persian empires, for instance, the Chinese empires, right? So, these are institutions. They don't rely on an emperor on a, or, or, or on a vizier or a prime minister or a person to run them. They have been built so strong from the very foundations that they can outlast people and they can provide services and goods to people over a long time. Palakasin din natin yung mga ating mga ahensya uh, in charge of competition, in charge of protecting uh, the interests of the welfare of the consumers. Dapat palakasin natin the Department of Energy, for instance, to make sure yung mga presyo ng ating mga bilihin, yung mga, mga gasolina at diesel, ay hindi haka lang. At hindi lang bas, walang self-dealing. Ay, alam na niyan, di ba? Kasi kung mahina yung gobyerno natin, ang mga oligarch, kakainin tayo ng buhay. Dapat meron tayong malakas na supervision, uh, supervisory agencies, to make sure yung ating telecom, hindi pinapasokan ng mga uh, dayuhan na kalaban natin. Para sisigurado na yung mga oligarchs or mga companies hindi inaabuso yung mga prices na mga basic na bilihin. Para yung mga cartel dyan sa yung mga cartel at middleman na inaabuso yung ating mga magsasaka. So kaya lang natin palakasin yung Department of Agriculture. Kaya nga sabi ko, if President Marcos is gonna really overhaul and really crack down on cartels and all the Department of uh, in his new role as also our Department of Agriculture Secretary, I'm all for it. 100% support. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Right? So yun ang point ko eh. Di ba may sinasabi si Eleanor Roosevelt about which kind of people talk about, gossip about human being, uh, about personalities, and which kind of people talk about great ideas and reforms? Let's be the latter one. Let's be the latter one. And yun ang problema ko sa mga political bloggers, a lot of them. They make it about chismis. They make it about personalities. Ano mga latest na ginawa ni Amy? Ano yung latest na sinabi ni Lenny? Ano yung latest na ganito yung ganon? I get it. It gets attention. But that's also what distracts us from the heart of the issue, which is building our institutions. And by the way, we can do it under any president. And we pu- should push every president of ours to invest in the institutions. And no, you're not going to bring about change by just one election or one president or two. You need sustained commitment and struggle. If you cannot do it, then what can I reclamo? Don't, don't pretend that just because you voted in one election or supported one candidate in one election, tapos ng obligasyon mo sa bansa, pwede ka na mag-abroad and mag-sabi na, ano ka, Rizal? Ano ka, feeling exile ka na ngayon? Ibang usapan yung mga journalist ka or writer ka, tapos hinaharas ka, etc. Then you have to go abroad. That, I got 100% support for you, right? Pero yung mga ibang, 
Ayaw ko na magsalita. But as I said, you have all the right to go wherever you want in the world. And that's what makes also power different in the 21st century. People can easily move around. So things don't work like in the past whereby well, Swedish ka, Swedish ka, and you're going to stay and you're going to fight for, for labor rights, for women rights, for environmental rights, and boom, 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 boom. And over the years, you'll have progressive government and state building and institution building, etc. Okay. Medyo madaldal tayo. Wala kami tayong sinabi. Ayoko na magsalita. Baka may magalit na naman sa atin. Or magalit kayo. So what? <laughs> As if naman. Ayan. Thank you, Kai Robin. Thank you naman, John, kay Christian Cruz. Ayan. Si Cheryl Singh. Excited dito sa meta natin. Thank you, Kai Novelita. Labrador. You know? Thank you naman, John. Sabi ni Sanogal. Fresh naman ni Prof. Fresh lang yan pag may lighting. Ganito, ah. Yo no fresh. Ganyan. Di na fresh. Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo. Sariling binabardagulan. Binabalawuran sarili. Ruby Pasqua. Emmanuel Salita. Sarap pala kung maganda yung lighting mo. Kasi napapagod ako sa ganitong lighting. It exhausts me eh. Salamat John. Bonjour. Ano to our friends. Lian. Yes, parang Italia. Ayan tayo. Thank you very much John. Sa kay Nermi Id... Id-, Id- Idiao, thank you very much. Ayan na, sabi ni Ma'am Pasita. Pasita, Duke. Ayan, Pasita, Senorita. You know? You know? Mga kafuego. Andiyan na naman yung mga friends natin from Australia, from New Zealand. Pero medyo may pagka-boy libre. Walang rubber shoes na dala, na Adidas. Ayan. Kunda ng Adidas. Ayan. Ayan naman tayo. Near me, ideal. Thank you very much. Thought-provoking. Ayan. Thoughts naman on K-12. Ah, oh, mamay na yan. Medyo mahabang usapan yan. Huwag natin sama-sama lahat yan. Okay? Ayan. Sabi naman ni A. Nalem, sikat na tayo. Sino? Si Tatay. Ayan. Si Mira Lopez. Thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate that. Ito na lang. Medyo hindi ko nakikita. Ayan. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you kay Roji. Pagayonan. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you kay Weng. Sanjin, Sanguines, thank you, hi, Natasha, Tommy, sorry if I don't get some of your names, not, not like my name is also easy to read, but, ayan, thank you for Robin, and worst, the worst invention of mankind, uh, I'm not sure about that, war is like just the last resort of mankind, ayan, sabi ni Mitch naman, andyan sa fully book, yung rampage na book, basahin yan, andyan rin sa national bookstore yan, medyo mahal lang yung book, kindle na lang bilhin mo, Connie Ferros, thank you very much, John. Interesting daw yung book na Rampage. Yes, basahin yan. It talks about the tragic and not so distant past part of our history that we rarely talk about. So, tingin, bakit, bakit ang pangit ng Manila kumpara sa mga ibang capitals like Hanoi or, I don't know, or KL, etc. One reason is because the heart of the city was devastated during Second World War. And asked the Americans to drop 40,000 bombs in that city, right? Okay. Julie Manoska. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Kai. Dona Orteza, kay Jeng Pastrana. You know, Pastrana. Che Rizal. Yan, dun sa issue ng indifference. Yeah, the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference, apathy, right? At sana hindi tayo maging apathetic dahil lang hindi tayo natuwa or dahil lang nanalo ng big time yung ating kandidato sa election na yan. Alright? Hindi ako nag kay President Marcos na kami ng bahala. No. You have to be active citizens. You have to make sure. In, ano to? Contracted? Ano yan? Contractor? Agaw ng bahaling? <laughs> That's not how it works, alright? You have to hold your leaders accountable and also support them when they do good things. Ganun lang dapat, guys. Wag fanatic, wag partisan, wag bara-bara. Wag lang nega-nega lang. Ron Manikis, thank you very much for your support. Thank you kay Mitch. Ayan. Thank you kay Mark Joseph Lag- Lagatao. Thank you kay Roel Alvar. You know. Thank you kay Grace Avenido. Thank you naman, John, and Angel, Pedro. Oh, ang daming tanong nung iba dyan. Ah. Thank you kay Jacqueline Aces. Preferred kong makinig sa'yo kaysa mga salita na kung ano-ano ngayon. Ayan tayo. Ayun eh. Buro mga... Okay naman mag-marites. Pero yung medyo matino naman na marites. May levels of marites yan. Right? TZ Mags, thank you very much for your support. Ayan. Green Belt, di ba sabi nyo isa? Or Green Hills. Ayan, pa-fresh naman tayo kunyari. Lighting, nice lighting. Thank you naman dyan kay Nagsispam daw sabi ni Mitch ng iba Ayan Thank you naman dyan kay Glenn Gupio Ayan, si Glenn supporter din natin yan Si Che Rizal, isa pa yan Maraming ano dyan Ayan Ano si Mang Kanor, ano daw <laughs> Ano naman yan Yun eh 
Thank you, Naman John, Kai, TZ Max, you're also an institution prof. Ayun, no? Talagang ginawa tayong institution, ha? Pag gumawa tayo ng academy, God willing, yung mga something like that, then I could say we're building our own institution, right? But in a way, we're trying to also pioneer a new way of approaching political education, social education, economic education. So, hindi na ginagawa natin. So, maraming salamat. Let's hope to continue this through the meta. Gawin natin edu- eh, institution ang meta, right? Mary Lynn, thank you very much for your support. Ayan, sabi ni Mary, Kacho, concerned siya sa mga institution natin. Like, I mean, kamustang CHR, kamustang PCGG, kamustang institutional checks and balances to begin with, right? Ayan, sabi naman ni Cherozal, vandalism naman yung ginagawa ng iba. Thank you naman kay Nikki Kate, kape-kape naman dyan. Yun, no? Ano si sabi ni Jacqueline Isis? Hate daw kay Marcos, migrate na kayo. Ano ba yun? Wow? 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 Bakit? Sino ba may ari dito? Wala naman na. Ah. Sa atin naman lahat to. Ah. Ewan ko dun sa mga ibang gusto mag ano. Rough Pete. Yan. Ano naman gawa ni tatay nila? Yan. Wala na. Nag-retire na. Huwag na daw natin pag-usapan. Eh, we're living with the legacy eh. John Miranda, can I discuss all those three elements, right? Political voluntarism, performative politics or populism, and third, absenteeism and arbitrariness. All of them I don't think are good for long-term institution building or state building, which I think is the greatest legacy a president can leave. Kung magaling kang presidente, after your six years, we have a stronger state. We have more stable and robust institutions. We have more rule of law. We have more investments. We have a stronger army and military. We have more uh, confidence in our courts, in our judiciary. We have more big fish, real big fish behind bars or eliminated. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nasan tayo? Dolomite Beach. Nasan na tayo? Ayan. Ayan tayo eh. Sabi ni Toots naman, yung Boracay Rehabilitation. Right. Okay, so Boracay Rehabilitation, di ba meron news na baka may casino or gambling, may big casino na gagawin doon? Oh. So if yung cleaning is, I'm not saying that's the case per se, but if cleaning means yung mga malilit na business ay paalisin mo, and then magpalagay ka ng malaking casino or hotel dyan na later on magpopolyot din, anong kamo, di ba? Anong kamo? I, again, I'm for cleaning up of Boracay and all, but it has to be done in a way that first of all, doesn't unnecessarily hurt too many small and medium enterprises uh, in ways na kawawang-kawawa na sila, tapos na, nabaksakan pa ng pandemia afterwards. And then, eso pa, hindi naman yung tipong linisin mo para ilagay mo ng mas malaking ano dyan, di ba? Hindi naman pwede yan. Di ba may casino na gusto mag-set up dyan sa Boracay? O, eh, eh, ano yan, di ba? Yan ang sinasabi ko eh. Yan ang sinasabi ko, guys. Iwag nyong, don't judge something yung sa una lang. Tignan nyo naman yung long-term effect niya. So, I'm gonna withhold my judgment on the Boracay one until I see what will be the decision on those proposed major casinos and all. Parang, nag-go na yata yan, di ba? Tignan natin yan. Okay, Luz Brufal, thank you very much. Ruby Rivera, Ja Brillantes, thank you very much for your support, ma'am. Ayan. Hindi, ito, kasi ito, Jacqueline Isis, nagiging masyado kang defensive. Ang, hindi ko sin, hindi namin sinasabi, napaka-ridiculous naman yung argument na sabihin mo, gusto nyo bang basura? Of course, hindi natin gusto ng basura, kaya nga sinasabi natin, why not do it in the proper way? Linisin mo yung basura, mag-invest ka sa mango tree para, you know, para medyo magkaroon ng rehabilitation, and hindi lang isang gilid lang, ayusin mo yung buong bay. So with that 300, 400 million, I don't know, makaning ginastos dyan, if you, you spend it in a more cost-effective, scientific way, you could have actually had long-term, more effective way of dealing with it. Right? Parang ganito, ang budget mo, sabi natin, 500,000 pesos. Itapon mo ba yan sa isang Hermes bag or pwede ka bumili ng 10 bigas, uh, kilo bigas at gawa ka ng sari-sari store mo? You get what I'm saying? So, okay, gumawa ka ng Hermes bag, you feel good. Pero wala ka ng ng sari-sari store, etc. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you need to have cost-effective, sustainable investment. No one is saying we want basura. Yan ang problema ko. Napakababaw yung level of argument. When you criticize a project, it doesn't mean you want things to stay bad. You, what you're saying is that there's a better solution. Ayaw mga kinig sa amin. Makinig kayo sa mga environmental scientists and experts. Ang dami nila dyan. Eh, sino naman ang gumawa ng Dolomite Beach na Environmental expert ba nga yan? Or mga ano lang yan? Blogger lang yata ng ano yan. Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo eh. Yan ang problema. Ang, ang, ang tawag dyan. Kung nga to. 
Ayan, strawman attack ang tawag dyan. Parang when you want to question someone, you, you, you distort their point to make your point look better. No one wants basura there. Kailangan ayusin yan. I'm all for, kaya nga kailangan ng Manila Bay Rehabilitation. Tama yon. Para maging mukhang matino naman. Sana one day, parang Waikiki, Hawaii level. Pero in the meantime, gawa ka naman ng matinong paraan. Hindi yung ano lang, pakyut lang, tapos ang dami mong gastos. Kasi bumili ka ng Hermes bag, dun sa 500,000, bumili ka ng, you know, gumawa ka ng business ng mga, ng bag ng, I don't know, crafts. You, you get what I'm saying? Basta. <laughs> Dapat long-term thinking. Ayan. Thank you very much, ay, Margaret Rodriguez. Ayan. Supporter din natin. Ayan. Kay Jen Aquino. Very kind of you. Ayan. Ayan. Si Toots naman, ininsist na yung issue ng water treatment. Okay. As I said, I'm okay for that. I'm okay with the cleaning up, with the water treatments. I'm okay with that. Wala akong problema. Ang sinasabi ko lang, but is that the end of the story? If may darating na mga big casinos and hotels, and then sila rin pwede mag-pollute, then kamusta naman ang Boracay in 5 to 3 years? 3 to 5 years, right? You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And then kawawa naman yung mga SMEs. Anong ginawa sa kanila? Meron bang sustainable na replacement nangyari sa kanila? So, y- yun, ang, yun ang sinasabi ko dito. Eh, diba? Again, I take your point. Guys, Let's be clear, we are all against basura in Manila Bay. We're all against corruption and trapos. We're all against incompetence. The point is, how do we deal with it in the best way? Kaya nga sabi ng solution dyan, institutions building. Kaya nga dapat yung mga leaders mananiwala sa mga institution. Hindi mananiwala sa tatay-style politics. Gets nyo? Gets, gets nyo ba? Kasi yan ang problema. Eh. Naiginig kayo sa mga vloggers na walang kwenta. They misrepresent your arguments. Try to make themselves look intelligent. Iritang irita ako sa mga ganyan tao. Pero hindi ko na sila patulan because they're not even worth my saliva. Alright? Okay. Low lives. Okay. Thank, ayan na. Relax lang tayo. Sorry, Lord. Okay. Thank you kay Jocelyn Lomberi. Lomberi. Ayan, mabay talaga yan si Jocelyn Galante yan. Thank you kay Braff Pit again. Thank you kay Riz Ani. Oh, 100% daw. Sabi ni... No, yung tablet. Yan, yeah, problema. Wala tayong matinong diskusyon eh. Ano lang tayo? Purong trash talk lang tayo. Bardagulan. Tuloy, walang matinong usapan. Ayan. Watching from V. Luna Dao QCC Naomi. You know. You know. Yo, no? Thank you kay Lilibeth Pernasita. Thank you kay Roy Vargas. Yo, no? Talagang mga... Yan. Na second round to support sila, Mitch. Thank you rin kay Christopher Trinidad. Thank you kay Mary Mancita. Thank you kay Maria Esmeralda again. Yeah. May bago akong book na parating God willing on China's influence in Asia. Kasama yung Philippines. Parang ano yun eh. Uh, push back of each South Asian country. Hopefully, we can get Ateneo, the Manila Press, or some of the local publisher to do a cheaper version of that. Because unfortunately, most of my books are published abroad. So, imagine pressure nila iba. And you can order them on Amazon. Ganito na lang. Oh. So, pero yung iba, try namin, ipa-republish ulit. Kasi yung isang book ko, yung Asia's New Battlefield, na-republish na Anvil yun, pero ubus ka agad eh. Ubus ka agad yung copies. 2017 yun, naubusan ka agad. Oh. Honey, Gisolis, Manny D., Oh, kasi if we do local one, mas mura at saka mas ano, affordable. Jomian Soriano, thank you. Kay Ange Tanyo, Toots. Uh. Let's see with PBM, yung inflation, I don't know. Kasi, depends also how you calculate inflation, eh, right? Or, uh, inflation is, you're looking at the basket of goods, di ba? Uh, but the point is that some of those things in the, those baskets have a much more immediate impact. Right, than the other things on those basket of goods. And in this sense, tignan mo naman sa gasolina. Bigla nga kumunting traffic eh. Hindi dahil gumandang mga kalsada, parasa lang naman ng ETSA, walang nangyari, lalo pa nga sumikip dahil sa ganyan-ganyan, nalagay dun sa bus. Pero kumunting kasi, ang mahal na gasolina ngayon, grabe. Parang mag-zoom na lang tayo kaysa mag-date in person. Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo eh. Alright. Yan. You know. Thank you kay Rose Oy. Thank you kay Mayon Soriano. Support naman daw sa new administration. I mean, as I said, I will support any president as well as long as tama yung ginagawa. And I'll criticize any president as long as hindi tama. I did that to, all, to multiple previous presidents, right? So, consistent lang naman tayo dito eh. Oo. Oh, may na yung press con niya, no? Si Angie Tancho. Sorry, I had work so hindi ko napanood. Oo. Oh. Okay na tayo, Jacqueline. Sorry, I mean, hindi, hindi kita pinapagalit. I'm just trying to clarify kasi 
Ayoko mas stuck tayo in that level of debate eh. Gusto natin mag-level up. Hindi yung nagtatrash talk lang tayo bardagulan. Magpapardagulan din tayo. Ah. Nag-enjoy naman ako eh. Pero hindi yun ang main thrust natin. Hindi ko gusto yun ang magiging engagement hatak ko sa inyo. Ang hatak ko dapat sa inyo, hatak talaga parang pangit pakinggan. No, no. I mean, the, the hook of this meta is substantive discussion that you're not gonna get on other quote-unquote bloggers. As simple as that. Yeah, hindi naman ako nag I'm just saying my intention is different for doing this. Oh, yun nga, sabi ko, oh, pa, anong toots, anong update dun sa casino na propose sa Boracay? Kasi yun point ko eh. You can, eh, you can praise this part, but if you're gonna forget the bigger picture, then pahapyaw yung analysis, di ba? Although, I, I get your point. Ayan, sabi ni Mitch, Hermes now, pansit canton later. Makes sense. Parang ano yan, ang Hermes po ay para siyang unity. Pwede siya for mental health, pwede siya pang social, pwede siya pang friendship, pang dating, pwede mo kainin. Hindi mo na kailangan kumain, basta tignan mo lang Hermes bag mo, Balenciaga, yun, okay na. Thank you kay Citrin. Chrysanthemum, Chris, uh, uh, Citrin, thank you very much for your support. Ayan tayo eh. Thank you kay Sonen, Makalalad, o oh, yan, si Makalalad, ano din yan. Si kay Che Cruz, Team Replay. Di pa naman tayo replay, ah. live pa tayo ah. Huwag kayong mag-drama, Team Roquel. Ay, Team Roquel. Roquel Satuna, thank you for your support. Ayan. Uh, effenescent oil na daw, sabi ni Mitch. Thank you. Anong effenescent oil? Alin? Yung sa Boracay or yung nasa Dolomite? Alam mo, hindi ba ako nag-Dolomite Beach? Bukas na ba? Gawa tayo ng meta natin straight from Dolomite Beach. Meta Dolomite. Ayan. Hindi yata ako papasukan dyan. Pag alam nila ako yun eh. Ayan, ano yun lang tayo dyan. Kakansyawin lang tayo. <laughs> Ayan. Tumarigato, Raquel. Satuna. Joining us from uh, Japan. Thank you very much. Okay. Mia. Fresnido. Thank you very much. Tell people din to dispose of their basura properly. Oo nga. Bakit naman itapon sa gobyerno yung problema or taxpayers? E di sana kung maayos ng pagtapon ng basura, may maayos na lagyanan ng basura, di ba kasi itapon sa Manila Bay, di ba? Alright. Sorry na, Mitch. Yeah, I had to say that. You're not worth my saliva. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, di ba? Ayan, si Jocelyn. You know, talagang mabait talagang mga friends natin dyan. Si Arlene Milan, Team Late. Team Late, not Team Replay, okay? Medyo late lang. Mamaya na tayo mag-meet and greet kung meron na tayong Philippine edition ng mga books natin. Dala kayo ng books nyo, tapos sign natin. Or magdala ko ng books ko, tapakan ko ng 20% on para may profit. <laughs> Ayan tayo, walang yan. Tapos for autograph, 50 pesos extra. Kung yung autograph, may konting graphics plus 25 pesos. Each selfie, 30 pesos. Ayan. Talagang may business model na tayo, institution na tayo, institution. Walang yan ginawang business ang meet and greet. Di ba yung iba gano'n yung mga operator talaga? <laughs> Thanks kay John Espacio, kay uh, Mayon Soriano, ayan. Yung mga nagtatang sa historia at chismis, yan. Tignan yung Meta 5 natin kagabi na apat na oras, duma- tatlong oras yata, di ba? Ayan. Ayan, tinatangon ni Toots dun sa issue ng Manila Bay City of Pearl. Tignan natin yan. Again, I don't want to pass judgment kasi ayoko ma- madala sa PR lang. Maraming kasi mga... Marami kasi mga bolero, BPR, PR lang dyan eh. Dami mga big talk, purong posturing pronouncement. I wanna really study the issue and look at what experts in the field are saying. I'm not an environmental science expert, so I'm gonna look at what environmental science experts are gonna say. I'm not gonna look at what some bloggers is gonna say about Dolomite Beach or whatever like that, right? Ayan. Ayan tayo. Ayan. Sabi nga ni Jay Brillantes, kumunti tuloy sa sakyan on sa weekend. Kasi ang mahal kasi ng gasolina, grabe. Grabe. Ngayon, masarap magkaroon ng kotse yung maliit na kotse. Yung pinaka, anong pinakamura na gasolina na kotse? Yung, yun, ano yung maliit na Toyota na sobrang liit? O yung parang kotse ni Mr. Bean? Parang ganun ang dapat kotse natin. Alright. Thank, ayan, pag handshake daw, 500. Tapos kailangan alcohol, di ba? 20 pesos ulit yan. So, nakahanda lang yan. Alcohol, mask, may extra mask, mask na may meta, tapos... Pwede natin gawin ano franchise yan. Ayan. Franchise. Selfie, 25 pesos each. Depende sa angle. If upper angle, lower angle, best angle, not so best angle. Yan. May bayad lahat yan. Autograph. Semi-autograph. Full autograph. Specialized autograph. That was my 20% na 
tapak doon sa presyo ng market price. Ayan tayo eh. Wala na, may business model na kayo. Ayan na, meron tayo pang bili ng damit kay uh, Picasso. Tama, tama ka Mike, Wigo. Di ba yung Wigo, ang laki ng loob niya. Ang lit-lit niya pagdating, Mr. Bean, pagpasok sa loob, wow, ang laki na ito. Tapos sobrang mababa yata yung consumption niya eh. Ayoko naman mag-electric car pa kasi una-una, wala tayong mga Tesla charging station dito ay social. Pangalawang, mahal din ang electricity natin, di ba? Napakamahal ang electricity. Parang wala rin, di ba? Kung buti sana mo muna electricity natin, charge ko lang dito sa bahay habang nag-charge for Meta. Okay. Okay na, ubus na na. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Ha? Thank you very much for joining us today. So, I just want to talk about more about how you build nations, how, why certain nations succeed, is because there's long-term investments in key institutions of the state, right? In, the, in, in institutions that uplift the living standards of people, empower citizens, not in one year, not in six years, but over decades and centuries, right? So, hanggang, hang, hanggang yung at ating politika ay reduced to dynasties and personalities and chismisan, We're never going to be a nation of strong institutions. We're going to be an, a nation of celebrities and populists and, and trapos and polygal dynasties. And good luck mo lang sa atin. Alright? Uh, yung Kia Pride, out of production na yan. So, hindi na pwede yan, Mike. Thank you very much. Yan, we go. May pang we go na tayo pag medyo magtapak ng 20%. Tapos may, may 550 pesos for uh, alcohol. Tapos may entrance ticket pa. Alam mo sa Baguio dati? Meron yun eh. Meron yung parang bar na Nevada Square. Ibang klase yung ginawa nila. Bago ka pumasok, may 50 pesos. Pasok ka dun sa each, ano, meron ka naman bayad dyan. Nako po. Hindi naman tayo gagawa ng ganyan. Isa lang yung entrance fee, alright? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless. Talk to you guys soon. Please ingat. Let's uh, just keep it here. And tomorrow, try natin mag-catch up naman with our President, President Duterte. Andyan pala yung pinsan ko, si Paula Briol. Kamusta cousin? Hello, goodbye. Parang movie nila, ano, Richard Alden. Hello, goodbye. Alright? Thank you. Talk to you soon.